This is a story about time. Time to love. We have something that keeps us together. Time to create. I was working night and day, uh, around the clock. Time to find a cure. We're seeing amazing strides thus far with um, dozens of new technologies and dozens of new medications. It's about time. To begin our story, let's go back in time to August 4th, 2000, the date Oliver Holler calls his burst day, the day a large tumor in his abdomen ruptured. It was in the evening and suddenly felt a really sharp, horrific pain uh, in my stomach and wound up rushing to the hospital for emergency surgery. And uh, long story short, they found a tumor the size of a football. The doctors called it a gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Surgeons removed it, and Oliver thought that would be the end of it. It was not. In follow-up meetings, an oncologist gave Oliver a chilling prognosis. He had cancer, and about six months left to live. I, I had an expiration date. I kept having him repeat what he was saying because I wasn't able to process it. It was very odd. Life plans suddenly become more serious when you're facing a termination date. Oliver and his wife Terry began making plans, drawing up a bucket list. They had a lawyer write up a will. They traveled, visiting family in North Carolina and seeing the magnificent redwood forests out west. And high on the bucket list was the dream of driving, perhaps owning, a DeLorean. You know, that 1980s car with a futuristic look, the stainless steel body, gull wing doors. A company founded by innovative car designer John DeLorean. A company that underwent financial collapse after only a couple of years in business. But the car gained newfound attention after it was featured in the 1985 blockbuster movie, Back to the Future. Of course, that's the film where a DeLorean turns into a time machine. There was something about that movie that Oliver and Terry, theater people from way back, found irresistible. Seeing that car, that DeLorean, back out slowly down the ramps, you know, the reveal mm -hmm. shot, uh, it really did something to me. It changed me. I'm, I've never been a car guy or anything like that, but that uh, connected with me. and. Um, Ever since then, I thought, wouldn't that be just the most amazing vehicle to, to drive? We did get a, a, a letter in the mail that had a credit card. It said, you've been approved <laughs> for a credit card. So uh, we were both elated about that, and, and Terry said, go for it, let's, let's find a DeLorean. They found a car for sale on an online auction site. They bid on it, watched with bated breath as competing bids nearly reached their new credit card's limit. They crossed their fingers, kept on bidding, and they won. With a few bucks to spare on their new credit card, a 1982 DeLorean was now all theirs. The car was in Knoxville, Tennessee, a not too distant drive from their home in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The vehicle turned out to be in better shape than they had expected. But owning a DeLorean was really just the beginning. Oliver's true intent was to transform his car into a replica of that famous Back to the Future time machine. So they bought a VHS tape of Back to the Future about the only way you could get a home version of the movie in those days, and they watched it over and over and over. Oliver jotted notes, took Polaroid photos of the TV screen, filled a book with sketches. 
Then, to gather the pieces they would need to transform the car into their new creation, the haulers traveled to junkyards, electronic surplus warehouses, hardware stores. The search for parts became... A scavenger hunt. And Terry would sh shout across the alley, Oh, I think I found a flux capacitor box, you know, and uh, I'd be like, I'm coming, I'm coming. It was pretty exciting. The DeLorean time machine became by far his biggest prop-making project ever. But along with that, the car's transformation became a diversion for him, almost an obsession, a way to keep his mind off that looming six-month expiration date. And Terry would uh, come home from work, and uh, I'd get all excited to show her what what I had bent and sawed and drilled, you know, that day. And, and she was always very enthusiastic and encouraging. And she was like, oh, that's a terrific piece of metal. <laughs> <laughs> but she was always sincere about it. She's, I guess she's as, as crazy as I am. Five years later, the doctor said, uh, you're showing very poor progress. We don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> and I said, likewise. Remarkably, the cancer scare was now over. Oliver was given a clean bill of health. The Howlers now had a chance to begin a new journey. After years of effort, they had successfully transformed their DeLorean into something that looked amazingly close to exactly like the Back to the Future time machine. Now in its completed form, the car became a celebrity in its own right. People were fascinated by the DeLorean, loved seeing it, enjoyed having their picture taken with it. It looks very good. It's like an exact replica of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. From the beginning, the car slash time machine had been simply a bucket list item, something they built for their own enjoyment. But now, Terry insisted the car needed to be, to do, something more. It's terribly selfish to have a time machine sitting in our driveway, and I hope that we offset that selfishness by sharing it. That's where the Michael J. Fox Foundation comes in. Michael, of course, was the star of Back to the Future. He was also not shy about revealing that he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. When the Hollers found out about his research foundation aimed at finding a cure, they started thinking, why not take people's enthusiasm for their DeLorean and turn it into a way to raise money for Michael's foundation? Next time somebody says, I want to get in your car, we'll say, well, we want to cure Parkinson's. Why don't we help each other? It's charming and fun and exciting and to know that the movie has that much effect to this date and the car can bring smiles to people's faces. It's wonderful. Conventions and TV commercials, weddings and public appearances. For years now, the Holler's time machine has been in high demand. Since they joined Team Fox, the foundation's fundraising arm, the Hollers have traveled in their DeLorean to all 50 states and 28 foreign countries. The car has racked up some 850,000 miles, and they've raised almost exactly that same amount of money for Parkinson's research more than $800,000. The Holler's remarkable success has gained the appreciation of someone special. For years, Terry and Oliver Holler have been hitting the road in their DeLorean time machine to speed a future without PD. They've raised dollars and awareness in more states and countries than any other Team Fox member. They've spent more time in a DeLorean than even I have, which is saying something. Terry and Oliver, on behalf of our foundation, everyone with PD, and Back to the Future fans around the world, thank you. The Holler's goal is to top a million dollars for the Fox Foundation. Every penny they've raised to date has gone toward helping to bring about an end to Parkinson's. 
the degenerative disorder of the central nervous system for which there is no cure. The Michael J. Fox Foundation is the largest nonprofit funder of Parkinson's research in the world. And Terry and Oliver are the prime example of how to be creative and enthusiastic and passionate and bringing um, a personal passion towards um, a greater good like Parkinson's research. The kind of creative fundraising that goes something like this. You know, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Every, every time somebody makes a donation, we kind of built this as a, to give them a reward uh, for their generosity. And that's my favorite sound clip from the movie. It is heartbreaking to hear their stories, but to know that they're confiding in this, it's okay. It can come to us, we can take that. Um, you know, we're not the doctor giving them a, a bad diagnosis or a scary diagnosis. We're the friends who say it's okay. I'm sorry you have this, but we wanna get rid of it too. Terry and Oliver, still theater people, still performing, still hams. And now they're performing with one of the greatest homemade movie props of all time. I joke about being on DeLorean Widow and that I wasn't, but the truth is I could have been very easily a widow to cancer. And I'm not. And every day I'm grateful when I wake up because I still have Oliver and we have something that keeps us together. Oliver Holler has been given more time on earth than his doctors once told him he should ever expect. He'll be the first to tell you he cannot control time. He's no time traveler. And yet... We're certainly traveling forward. We tell people, you know, we've got our sights on the future and uh, we can uh, travel to the future as long as you're patient, one day at a time. <laughs>